All right, what's up, everyone? Um, let's talk about Metsmap today. So um, I wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to Agman Alduri for um, creating a beautiful course. And what I did today was kind of run through the course um, and I'll give you a sample of uh, one of the lessons and assignments that I did. So uh, completely real time, so you can just follow along and I talk a little bit about other principles that I also picked up from um, Agmet's video. So really, really cool stuff. Um, now, of course, what is Met's Map? The thing, and I'm sure most of you that are watching this channel know what Met's Map is. But again, I want to reiterate it a little bit. Um, the thing is, like, Agmet created a course that is very beginner friendly, but also tackles a lot of fundamental principles that are crucial for intermediate and advanced artists. Again, I went through it, I picked up a lot from it as well. It's a great course. Um, the way he set it up is you kind of go through the very rudimentary fundamentals of primarily digital painting. Um, also a little bit of drawing um, is mixed in there. Um, and he talks about, you know, value, value grouping, um, lighting, color, all that good stuff, all the things you need to know in order to get started with digital painting. And that's a beautiful thing about this course. Uh, what I really liked about it when, you know, I went through it is that you can see Agmet doing all of the assignments himself and kind of talking you through it. So this is a cool way for you to really get into like the, the, the mind and the process of the artist behind the course. You're not just seeing like a sped up uh, demonstration, which I really advocate for like real life demonstrations. And Agmet does this for all of the courses, which is amazing um, because you can, you can, you can see him struggle sometimes, which is great because that's, you know, you learn a lot and you see him problem solve and he talks his way through it. And so the way that I recommend you go through this course is Agmet uh, sometimes advises you to follow along, which if you're an advanced artist, like be my guest, that's a great idea. Um, I would, however, and that's how I did the clip that, you, that I'm gonna show you today, is I first intensively watched the lesson to really pick up key points. Um, and I think this is a very effective way of learning. So really listen to what he's saying, the fundamentals that he's talking about, and try to, when, when you're then later applying that into the assignment, try to, you know, remember all of the key talking points that he talked about and then try to apply that in the assignment. Um, the thing is like, if you start following along, the problem you kind of create there sometimes is you, there's a discrepancy um, between what you're doing and what you're hearing. And so you're not really getting the full content. And this is something that is you know so great about the course is that Ahmed is really doing it. He's, he's showing you how to do it. So you can really pick up on that listen to that and then apply it later. Uh, and so that's what I did. Uh, the cool thing also about this course is you're not alone in it. Um, there's an, an entire community. I think there's even a um, an unofficial Discord server that you can join, so that's great as well. Um, but like on the website itself, you can just also check out the submissions from other students. So you can, you have like, a wide range of skills from other people that you can see um, and you can kind of measure off from like, okay, well, hey, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? You can ask for critiques if you want to. I think there's also a higher tier uh, membership that you can get with Agmet where you get personal critique, which is great, you know? Um, so you're definitely not alone in this course. So that's, that's the beauty about this course. Um, there's a lot of videos, a lot of content to go through. I think Agmet recommends it takes like 15 weeks. Uh, I think that's a, like a good measurement if you if you go through it consistently and you'll pick up a lot. Don't rush it, like really listen to what he's saying. I, like I recommend in this course, watch every video twice. Once to really get the message and then one time to um, to maybe pick up on, on different things or while you're doing the assignment to maybe see what kind of other tips and best practices he was showcasing. After this, um, on, like at the end of this video, I'm showing you a clip real time, it takes about 20 minutes where I just do one of the assignments where I listened to what Ahmed was saying um, in one of his lectures and then trying to apply that in my own assignment for that lecture. So I hope you enjoy it um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and, um, you know, using knowledge that Matt gave me, I'm going to now try and study this head as well. So um, I remember Matt saying, you know, starting with the cranium. Right, and we can start with a circle if we want to and go full Loomis. Right, and then I want to find, based on the reference that I'm seeing, I want to find that that side of the head, right? Somewhere over here. And then what I'm first going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try and follow it in the way that Matt did it. So I'm going to find that curvature of the nose. Right? And then see where that will insert into the tooth cylinder, which in this case is completely different than the video um, or like the demonstration that met it. And that like this is the important thing because uh, he's looking at a different subject, but he's not specifically talking about how you should paint that subject. It's about what you should be looking at in order to apply it to different things, right? Really considering those fundamentals. So again, here the upper lip you know, and we can find that mouth the way that, you know, Ahmed did like this. And then see where the upper lip will kind of insert. And see where that lower lip comes. And then the chin, I remember him saying, um, talking about, you know, there could be a sphere, you know, that where you can find like the, the, the area between the lower lip and the chin. Now in this case, again, right, because you know this now, you can see that this is not the case in this reference picture. So it's a little bit more straight, but you can still remember what Matt said about that. Now, again, referring back to the Loomis principle, when we find the side of the head, we can find that center line to see where the cheek or the jaw will insert, which in this case is a lot harder to find, right? Because this is a, a bulkier person, so it's not that easy to find or see, but you can definitely rely on those fundamentals. Now I'm gonna try and find the eye, um, very similar to how Matt did it. And when he was doing the lecture, I, I remember him saying um, that, you know, he's he just does like a, a triangle, which I like because it's very easy to just find a rough placement. And then above that, we can find that eyebrow. And we can sort of already also see where that shadow will be. And the thing I really enjoyed about um, Met's lecture so far is that he's trying to give you like a nice blend between structure and drawing, you know, which I focus on a lot, but blend it nicely with painting directly, you know, talking about how you can find certain shapes, really nice designs, um, just to help you get like a nice result, right? And I'm going to try and find that ear. Um, now the way that method was, was to triangulate um, to find that shadow. I'm going to do it a little bit more my way because, you know, I'm a professional, so I have my own methods. Um, but then again, Metz um, is perfectly fine, especially I like the way that he triangulates things to find shadow areas. Gives you a really good indication of how to find things. Um, I just do it the way that Loomis does it, actually. I just, I, I you know, I follow the, the contours of the the top of the eyebrow and then the bottom of the nose. And then based on that, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of estimate that my ear will probably be in this vicinity. And then I'm gonna also draw in that shadow shape. See where the skull will kind of end and 
continue on into the neck like this and now we're not gonna see much of his neck probably also because of the the camera angle in this case all right now we can zoom in a little bit um and kind of you know i'm trying to remember all the things that Med was talking about so for instance i you know i i know he was often double checking that he wasn't relying on the things that he knew all the time you know because i do that as well especially if you're a concept artist you need to rely on the things you really under you know understand and know from from memory and by heart but sometimes you know if you want to think make things more original and lively looking you really need to pay attention to your reference right so kind of what i'm doing here is i can definitely change that forehead a little bit Give it a little bit more of that curvature. And then for instance, the nose, I kind of curved it in too fast. So I need to go back a little bit. And then we can find like a nice shadow shape for those cheeks, side of the cheek. Like that, and then this guy has a little bit of a mustache, which we can just paint in like that. And then we're gonna find that eye. And again, and this this is where Ahmed, you know, also was talking about that triangulation that you can really use here. And that's the thing, you know, especially if you want to be a painter. Um, it's like a really good idea to first find your general shadow shapes. And then find other, you know, darker shapes within those shadows. Gives you a nice separation between light and uh, shadow. And again, when, when you're doing this, and, and this is what I, I like about it, like um, the way that uh, in Met's course, he built it up to be like in a step-by-step -step approach. You can follow him live doing it, right? Um, if you're stuck somewhere, right? You, you, like, you, you really try to remember the first part of his lecture. You're stuck somewhere, you know, pause what you're doing, watch it again, right? And then reapply it. You're gonna learn so much from doing that. So I'm again looking for those shadow shapes, trying to actively, again, not fall for what I do generically. I like this brush, by the way, Med. Damn, it's, it's an awesome brush. I don't use Photoshop, unfortunately, but this is an awesome, Awesome brush, man. And this is also the cool thing that I loved about his lecture, like spe specifically on this, but he talks about it in a lot of lectures, like instant ways to, for you to recognize what you see on the reference and then stylize it, right? Because that's ultimately what a lot of us want to do is we want to stylize things. Um, so. Met talks you through how you can find interesting shapes to, you know, kind of aid your stylization. Based on what you see in the reference. And I, I really like that. 
onto that nose like that And then let's put in the shadow side for the ear. That's a, that's the cool thing about ears. They don't need a lot, you know, just like a good solid shadow indication will already make it believable. And then we can add in like the edge of that hair, break up the silhouette a little bit. And then maybe add, indicate a little bit of that beard. Make it a little bit darker. Having so much fun with this, I can't stop. And that's the thing with with uh, Met's course. It's like it's a lot of fun, and the cool thing is he goes through it himself, and he also explains, you know, why he's struggling, or what you should pay attention to. And these are all things that, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why you should really listen to what he's saying, and not only blindly copy it right um, or try to instantly follow along sometimes it's just better to listen right i listen to the lecture and i learn a lot so and that's the fun thing right all right there we go so um so this is just like one of the videos and and you know again if you go through met's course like i said um like all of these videos all of these lectures like step by step going from rudimentary really what you need to pay attention to you know in order to apply all of these principles um and then you know it goes more complex and more complex and although the you know the subject itself is portrait painting this can apply to anything right like anything whether it's you know other humanoid things like creature design this would be awesome for like also applying it to your creatures but also if you just you know, the general things of painting if you want to paint landscapes whatever you want to do pr painting props all of that fundamental knowledge is packed into that course so that's a really cool thing all right have fun everyone see you later